I bet you are a good drummer, better than you give yourself credit for. But I bet you're also tired of being stuck on a stagnant plateau where you're not really making any progress and you're afraid that you're never gonna achieve that drumming dream of greatness and sounding like you're drumming heroes. So today I'm gonna show you the fastest way to go from good to great on the drums. I hope this really helps you out. You can do this. Hey, welcome to The Non-Glamorous Drummer. I believe that no matter who you are, you can master the drums when you have the right tools. And I believe this video is gonna help you with just that. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. And also while you're here, grab my free, super helpful e-guide, the three-part daily practice routine. Know what to practice, this is key. Know what to practice. If you know exactly what to work on and you can focus your practicing, you do reach drumming greatness step by step. And that guide's gonna help you with that. So go check that out, it's a PDF guide, totally free. First off, how do you know for sure whether you're a good drummer or a great drummer? Well, I'd say if you're a good drummer, you can play steady beats with good time. You've got some basic coordination, like, you know, good enough that you can play what you want to play. You can play through some of your favorite simple songs without losing your place in the song, and you can have fun doing it. And your hand technique is good enough that, you know, you're not maybe not able to play crazy fast, but you're able to be relaxed enough and play the gist of what you want to play, play the basics of what you want to play on the kit. I think those are some of the just common qualities of a good drummer, where you've kind of made it past the beginner status, you're kind of getting into intermediate territory, and you're sounding all right. But I'd say the difference between that and a great drummer, if you're a great drummer, you are totally relaxed and comfortable and therefore confident and authoritative behind the kit. You're able to make any groove sound musical, and you're able to play exactly what you hear in your head. You've made that connection between ear and limb so that you can execute exactly what the ideas are that you have playing in your head. Also though, this is key, you can improvise in a variety of styles. That's really the big difference. A good drummer might not be able to improvise so much, but a great drummer can always improvise freely, musically, on the fly, in a variety of styles. That's something that's really cool that I'm gonna show you how to do in this video. We're gonna get to that in a minute. I'm gonna give you some really good tips for how to improvise freely. So how do we bridge that gap between good and great? How do we get you from good drummer, okay, average, to extraordinary drummer? Let's dig into this. Well, from a technical level, all you've got to do is build your coordination. Sounds very simple, but from a technical level, that's pretty much all there is. But on a deeper level, on a musical listening level, we've got to build our listening. You've got to be able to listen really well. So you've got to be able to have your hands and feet playing what they want to play, but you also have to be able to listen really well. Those are the two things we're looking at. So how do you grow in these two areas? Well, as far as growing in coordination, I've got a whole bunch of specific examples, exercises I'm showing you today that are also in that e-guide I mentioned earlier. So be sure to grab that before you go. Some basic coordination exercises are just the, the simple rudiments. Really, if we boil down all the rudiments into three that you should actually practice regularly, it's singles, doubles, paradiddles. And paradiddles are actually a great coordination exercise because not only can you practice this stuff with your hands, you can also practice them with your feet. And then you can take them and mix them up between foot and hand. And so you can really split your brain in two with any combination of two limbs where maybe you're doing paradiddles between kick and snare, or you can even do paradiddles between right hand and left foot. You can get crazy with it, but those are gonna really build your coordination if you're working on playing them precisely. Something else that's also really fun to do that I like practicing myself is playing a simple rudiment over a foot ostinato. What I mean by ostinato is just a repeating pattern, kind of like a groove pattern. It could be like a bossa nova, kind of boom, 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 or like a samba pattern, or it could just be quarter notes with your feet. Point is you have something steady, repetitive going with your feet while you're playing sort of random things with your hands, playing different rudiments and maybe moving them around the kit. It's a great way to build coordination. The thing is, this is endless. There are so many things you can practice to improve your coordination and different things work better for different people, but I hope you're able to grab onto one of those and I hope one of those types of exercises really helps you out. They're all in the e-guide, so be sure to grab that. So listening, that's what I've said will really help you with becoming a great drummer on a deeper, more musical level sort of in, in building those intangibles, because a great drummer has a lot of those so-called intangibles, but I'm gonna try to make them as tangible as I can and give you specific ways to work on these things. But in the realm of listening, here's a weird exercise you can do. It sounds kind of strange, maybe a little bit monotonous or boring, but I assure you it's not. I think it's really cool. Take any basic groove that you already know really well and play it over and over again with your metronome at just a good relaxed, maybe moderate to slow tempo for 10 minutes without stopping. What's gonna happen here, especially if it's a groove you're already comfortable playing, as you play it over and over and over again, your ear is gonna gravitate toward different things because in a way your brain's gonna get bored because you already know how to play it. Uh, you, you know what each limb is doing. You have the, your limbs under command. And so your brain's gonna start suddenly reaching for other things. Your ears are gonna start to notice exactly how your hi-hats sound. 
you're gonna start to notice that annoying ringing sound coming from your hi-hats. You're gonna start thinking, oh, I don't know if I like these hi-hats so much. Hopefully that won't happen. Or you'll be hitting your snare and you'll be like, huh, never really noticed that, that frequency coming out of my snare. Or you'll at least be paying attention to exactly how you're hitting it. Same with the kick drum. Your ear's gonna start to notice these little details because the sound is just going over and over and over again, just pounding into your head. This is a really good thing because this means that you're starting to build another higher level of coordination. It all circles back to coordination. You're starting to build this level of dynamic independence where you can pay attention to the dynamics of each limb and you can start to control specifically how loud your kick is without that affecting your hands or how loud your hi-hat is without that affecting kick and snare. Either way, because you're, you're getting so comfortable playing the groove that it's on autopilot and so you're able to pay more attention to the nuance. There's a lot to be said for repetitive, deep practice like that, so do it. Do it with a basic groove. Do it with a little, a little bit more complex groove when you're ready for that because that's gonna help you get that complex groove down a lot more solid. Here's what we're getting at here, and this is something I, I want you to take away from this. Coordination makes it possible to play something, but listening makes it possible to play something really well. And so when you've got the coordination, you can play whatever you wanna play on the drums, but if you're not listening, it's not gonna sound good. So you've gotta have the coordination so you can put it together, but you've gotta have the listening so that you can make it sound good and make it feel good. The listening is honestly like another dimension of coordination. If coordination is a three-dimensional thing, then listening is that fourth dimension. And when you add it in there, it's hard to explain what's there, what's setting you apart now from the good drummers, what's making you now a great drummer, but it's obvious that it's there. It's a really cool thing. Something else you can do, even when you're not actually sitting at your kit to build your listening, is just sit there and listen to music, but ask yourself why all the time. This is something you might have heard me say over and over again. As you're listening to music and you're listening to drum parts and you're hearing everything going on on the record as you're hearing great musicians interact with each other, Ask yourself why, like why did the drummer play that fill after that guitar riff, or why did that sound so good with the riff the vocalist sang? Dig into those details and listen to the songs over and over again, just like how you play the groove over and over again, because you'll start to notice things in recordings you hadn't noticed before, and you'll start to listen at a deeper level. So that's a great way to practice this too, apart from your drum set. Okay, so I mentioned earlier improvising. What is the big secret to improvising really well? Well, if you've been paying attention, you know it's gonna have something to do with coordination and something to do with listening, and so we're just gonna zero in on this a little more, and I'm gonna give you some specific ways to really practice improvising. Improvisation requires complete limb freedom so that you're totally comfortable behind the kit. But here's the thing, this ability doesn't just magically arrive after you've practiced a difficult coordination exercise over and over again. I remember in high school when I was first really building my coordination, I remember hoping that would happen and playing this complex jazz fusion exercise over and over again thinking, well, eventually I'm gonna be able to just improvise and solo with this. The truth is that generally doesn't happen. You have to do a little bit of extra work, put in a little bit of extra effort to push yourself in that direction. What I'm about to tell you isn't a tangent, I promise, it's related. So when I was in high school, uh, I had this terrible fear of public speaking. And to be honest, I still hate public speaking. I would much rather just talk to one person. Right now, I'm one-on-one -on -one with you. I'm at least one-on-one -on -one with my camera here in the studio. But in, in high school, my speech professor would let us write out our speeches, you know, note for notes. We could get up there and give our speech and basically just read it. And I was terrible at it. It was so boring. I would just stand there and I would read through the speech, really dull. And I hated it and I felt so self-conscious. I felt like everybody was just watching me and judging me as I was giving my speech. But then I got to college and I had this speech professor who did not let us do that and he made us either do it from memory or do it from just a few notes or a very simple outline. And I remember the first day of class, he actually had us get up and give impromptu speeches. And the funny thing was that that helped me get a lot better at public speaking. I still don't feel like I'm very good at it, but I got a lot better at it because I had to practice my speeches. I had to look through the outline, I had to think through everything I was gonna say and basically practice improvising my speech and practice having a conversation with my audience. So just sitting there and conversing with them and actually thinking through the words I'm saying rather than just reading them on the page. That very directly applies to music because when you're practicing exercises and you're practicing note for note exercises, if that's all you do, all you're gonna be able to play are note for note exercises. Just like all I could do was word for word read my speech and that was boring. But then when you can practice just deviating a little bit from that note for note exercise, then suddenly you're actually paying attention to what you're playing. That's the key, you've gotta pay attention to what you're playing, so you've gotta be listening to everything you're playing. So yes, do that repetitive practice. Practice a coordination exercise over and over again, but get to where you're really listening to what you're playing. That way you're aware of the notes you're using, the words that you're saying, what, what you're speaking to your audience, whether there's an audience or not. So that you're really paying attention to the musicality of what you're doing, and that's how you get into the realm of improvising. 
But of course, I'm not gonna just leave you with that. I'm gonna try to give you some very specific examples here that will help you out. And of course, there's a lot of good stuff in the e-guide, so be sure to download that. Here's a great way to start improvising, just at a really basic level. All you gotta do is play quarters with your feet and then singles with your hands. And then from there, start to play some, some funny accents or like move it around the kit so that you're, you're listening to what your hands are doing, but you're letting your feet go on autopilot. Or something else you could do is practice paradiddles between the kick and the snare with your, your right hand following your right foot and then let the pattern deviate from paradiddles and become more random. Or literally just play a groove and start making up a kick pattern. Whatever you do, the point is explicitly practice making stuff up. You have to be intentional about it. Practice making stuff up. So play an example, a coordination exercise over and over again until it's comfortable, but then practice deviating from it. And that's how you learn to improvise. And that's how you have a ton of fun doing this. So you're not just sitting there bored playing the same notes over and over again. You've got to get outside the box, bust out of the framework and have some fun with this because it's extremely rewarding. So do everything I taught you today. Do everything we worked through. Um, pretty much all of that. I think most of the examples I even played you are in the e-guide. So get the e-guide. That's going to give you something very specific and concrete to practice. You can download it, print it, take it to your practice room. But start working on that. That's going to guide your practicing a bunch. It's really going to help you if you've suffered from just a lack of knowing what to work on. That's going to help you get past the plateau. It's going to help you go from good to great. I want you to go from good to great. And so Follow what I told you today. Check out the e-guide. It's really gonna help you out a bunch. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe before you go. It'd be great to have you. There's a whole bunch of videos here on the channel helping you go from good to great. This is just a great summation of it. So be sure to check out some of my other videos. Know that if you put your mind to it and you practice this, you can do it. Stay non-glamorous. Take care, everyone. I'll see you on the next video.